Well, prepare yourself, guys. I hope you are prepared. Chris with T3 Media's, and I'm going to go through the worst movies of 2018. Everybody's been bashing on these uh, movies for 2018, and I, did, I was like, no, nah, do I want to get on the on the bandwagon and say, oh, we are here are my worst movies? But to be honest, a lot of these movies that are considered the worst that came out last year, I have not even seen. So I was like, you know what? There you go. Let's talk about the worst. Let's, this is the top movies that sucked so hard that i'm glad that i missed okay let's just go and just call it that the best worst films of 2018 that i missed now that's not to say that some of these movies i might not come back and come uh, to see a couple of these movies i was very interested in seeing some of them i was like eh, let's i'll give it a shot i'll wait for video some i intended to see in the theaters i just then later i was like i'm, like, I'm glad i missed that train wreck so Without further ado, let's just no, let's just talk about it, man. No, you know, let's just get over it. Let's get into the since this is becoming a more of a conspiracy kind of a of a show. It's because it's me and you talking about these things, and we're gonna break down what's really happening. So, in some of these movies, I'm gonna give my opinion and share a lot of your opinions about why these movies really failed. So, without further ado, let's talk about the best worst movies of 2018 that I'm glad I didn't break a dollar for now. At, uh, now, it's not, oh, let me also let me let you guys know this as well. These movies are not broken down by my opinion at all. This movie, these movies are all broken down by your votes, by your dollars. The amount of money that the in the domestic box office, the amount of money that was spent to go see these movies. So from the most to the least, I'm going to start off this list with based on the box office mojo results. Of how well these movies did. I'm not going to get into the, uh, the semantics about the budget versus income and all that stuff because I don't have time. But let's go and uh, let's start with the number one. Number one on the list uh, is Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I was very much uh, so looking forward to seeing this. After uh, doing the interview with one of the actresses from The Breakdown, I was interested in seeing how the, uh, the young man that was in that series was going to do in this movie with uh, with Chris Pratt and whatnot, all these heavy hitters uh, surrounding him and whatnot, and and the, the trailer seems pretty cool. I mean, you got Jurassic Park, you got these great an these uh, animators and these great effects, and it makes these uh, these these creatures come to life and and whatnot. So I'm thinking, hey, Last Jurassic World did great, blew the doors off of a lot of records. So hey, let's let's keep it going. Let's 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 see what happens. But oh, it just like. How Jurassic Park 2 compared to the first one sort of started to go down, and this was no exception. Now, according to Box Office Mojo, domestically, this movie successfully made over $416 million. That's, just, that's not even including what it made worldwide. Now, is that a, a, a flop? No. You pretty much made your budget back at home. That's not even counting the rest of the world. So... I'm pretty much going to call that one a, a success, but it was so critically panned. It was so hard hit by the fans of Jurassic Park and Jurassic World that I was like, oh, it just sucked the energy out of me. I didn't want to see it. And so I didn't. I didn't go see it at all. I still haven't seen it to this day. And it's one of the films that I plan on seeing later on. Now, let's go to the next movie. This is a movie that I am so glad that I missed. I was not even interested in seeing it. I did not have any uh history of it or whatnot all i knew is that oprah was in it oprah's a great actress let's check this out what the trailers uh say to me i watched the trailers and nope wrinkle in time was like more like a wrinkle on my interest that's what that was and i totally passed on that one but it made over a hundred million dollars domestically still i'm thinking this is a disney movie it had some uh some effects chris pine was the lead. They, they barely advertised this movie properly. Whoever was in charge of the marketing for this, uh, that separate company that Disney uh, outsourced for this, they need to get now. Whoever you guys were hiring for, you, you must be putting your best people. Let's, theory, let's, let's talk about the conspiracies on this one. Disney is putting their best marketing team on Marvel uh, movies mostly. Not even, not even their Star Wars campaign. Not since. Not since the, um, not the Last Jedi, but the um, one before that. Not, oh my God, I'm uh, 
Oh, the re- no, the return, not a new hope. What's it called? The the one before the last Jedi. That was a brilliant marketing campaign. Then all of a sudden, it just started going like, yeah, everything Avengers. Let's just push everything on our marketing department on the Marvel movies and whatnot. So when a um, now your marketing campaign on your cartoons are still on point and your live adaptations on it too. But this one, what for some reason, I, this, it felt like Disney wasn't even trying to push it. Probably because they saw it and they were like. Let's just try to save as much money as we can. They knew that this was going to suck and they knew it was going to suck hard. And it's not. uh, And I feel like the next movie that comes after this on this list uh, at a a whopping. This is a 50, almost a 50 percent drop between Wrinkle in Time to The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. Fifty four million dollars domestic. And it was barely advertised. Barely. And, and what was marketed, what was shown on screens, what was shown on uh, social media and just uh, uh, advertised on the radio. It was barely a whisper. This should have been a a classic. You have Morgan Freeman talking all uh, uh, and as the nutcracker rises from the ashes and couldn't blah, 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 blah. It was nothing happening. Nothing. You had Morgan Freeman. You can't get him to do a You got Morgan Freeman in your movie. You get him to sit him down with the marketing team and you start working on these trailers and you start working on on, on these uh, commercials. That's just the bottom line. Disney, I don't know what that. Like I said, Disney is more focused on Marvel. They got that property. It's blowing up. It doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon. People are still excited about it. Like today, as they were uh, in 2008, it's been 10 years and they are still just doubling down on the marketing department and now let's get out of disney for a second let's talk about the number uh the number four i'm gonna say this is not even a number one and this is just that's not a top 10 or anything like that it's just going down the list however many are the how many are the next movie is the predator everybody was excited about this my friend sean was excited about this one i was kind of interested in it i was not after that last predator's attempt i had no expectations on this at all none 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 I had screenings to see it. I even skipped an advanced screening, a press screening, because I felt like this movie was going to suck. And when I saw that Super Predator, everybody was like, oh, my God, it's going to be great. It's a Super Predator. I'm like, so? So? It, it, it doesn't. I could tell from the trailer. It didn't. I could not tell whether or not this was a comedy. This was an action. I couldn't figure out what the thing what was going what it was doing. And if the marketing department was that uh, confused about what this movie was supposed to be, I knew that the, the that mean that meant that the director. Well, but everybody. Who oh, but this director is the the guy? I forgot who it was. But I think it was Sean. I was like, oh my god, this is the guy. He did this and he did that. I don't care. Let okay. Let me see what the first week does, and then I'll make my decision. First week came and gone. John Campia said, out of all the actors and the talent in this movie, this is no disrespect to her because I feel like she's a she's become a great actress lately, especially since the newsroom. But this should not have been the case. Olivia Munn, according to his opinion, Olivia Munn brought it better than everybody else. All the other people in that in that movie. Now, looking at that cast, I even though I love Olivia Munn, I mean, love Olivia Munn. That should not have been the case. And I respect John's opinion. I don't always agree with him. But when he said that, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going. No, did not go. Still have not seen it. And I might not ever watch this one. And the next one I know that I probably will never watch unless you catch me on TBS is uh, I Feel Pretty. Did I mention that Predators made 51 million, uh, over 51 million, just a little bit over 51 million? I Feel Pretty. Amy Schumer. I love Amy Schumer. Now, for some reason... That leather tragedy on Netflix that hey, you guys gave me a lot of views on that. And I love the comments on that. If you haven't checked that out, watch that and tell me what you guys think about that. Let's keep talking about that. What the hell is up with Amy Schumer lately, man? Because I love Trainwreck, but I have not had any interest in seeing anything of her other movies. And it was mostly because of that leather special. It feels like the her best comedy to me and her best work was the stuff that was put on Comedy Central. I love her TV show to this day, up to the last episode. I don't know if it's been canceled yet or not. I feel like it's about to be if it hasn't been officially. But the funniest things that she has said and done that made me just go crazy laughing is her skits and her show. But her movies? No. And I don't mean for that to rhyme. But let's go. 
That's that's just something wrong with that, man. I don't know what's going on, but Amy, come on, man. Why? Chuck Schumer did a better job uh, fronting the president in the Oval Office than you did with this movie, from what I heard. And it only made forty eight, a little bit over forty eight million dollars, just under forty nine million. Uh, uh, forty eight seven, yeah, forty eight point seven. So, no, I'm, I'm probably going to pass on this one. Probably never going to come back to seeing it. Now, here's another movie, next movie, that only made $44 million, a little bit over $44 million in the uh, domestic box office that I still do want to see. Um, Ryan, Re- no, not Ryan Reynolds, um, Gosling in uh, The First Man. First Man to Walk on the Moon. Let's, let's watch that. Now, the criticism is that the director thought that after La La Land, he was feeling himself like like the M. Night Shyamalan, like the Slam Hammer, just, oh, the best guy since Steven Spielberg, oh, I can do anything, and then, bam, Lady in the Water, and, and then the happening. So what happened? Your career goes, <clears throat> so maybe he was feeling himself too much, maybe he wasn't, I don't know. I have not seen La La Land either. That's a movie I don't plan on really watching. You're going to have to catch me on a good day on that one. But First Man, yeah, I, I plan on, t- uh, you know, doing a U-turn and coming back to that because it only made $44 million domestic, but I was curious in watching it. Here's another movie that uh, comes right after at $46 million domestic, and I, I'm going to really get into this one, Red Sparrow. Now, whatever you might think about the actress, that's one thing, but it was very clear. That while Movie Pass, which I do not subscribe to anymore, AMC A list for life, son. What Movie Pass tried to do, because they had skin in the game financially with um, another movie that also flopped, that's on this list that I'm going to talk about later, that came out at the same time as Red Sparrow, that they tried uh, Jennifer Lawrence uh, to, to hurt her uh, chances in, because, because uh, Movie Pass had a significant amount of subscribers at the time. They don't now. Stocks. <laughs> I think they're the reason why the stock market is plummeting. Um, so they would they would limit, uh, not even limit. You could not use your movie pass to go see Red Sparrow if you were a movie pass. You had to go buy a ticket if you want to see it. But for the movie that they did have uh, money invested in, I mean, they were the production team behind it. They were like, oh, but we got plenty of tickets to this other movie. Go watch that. It came out at the same time. This is a guy you know, the guy you love, and the guy you trust. The guy who always brings it. You want to see an action? Watch this one. But let's not mention the fact that we helped produce this movie. Let's not mention that to the people. No, no. Oh, no. Oh, Sparrow's not working? Well, we don't guarantee that. Thank you for the $9.99, which didn't turn into $14.99, which didn't turn into $29. Thank you for the money. And we're not letting you see as many movies as we promised we would let you see in the beginning. But, you know, thanks. But go see this movie, though, that nobody wants to see. You're more excited about Jennifer Lawrence? Sorry. And I, I don't know what happened with all that. And I think it was like a lawsuit or whatnot. But even the shareholders in MoviePass, they started to uh, go, no, 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 no. Your you're, you're, uh, MoviePass is messing up bad. And we are we got to look into this. So I, I really hope that a lawsuit came from that. And MoviePass needs to just die. Now, because AMC A list is crushing it, I'm gonna go see AM, uh, AMC uh, later on uh, right now. So uh, let's move on to the next one. After Red Sparrow, it is Sherlock Gnomes. Everybody's panning this one. This, only, this movie only made forty three uh, plus million dollars. Only made forty three mil, and I'm surprised that even at that. It is a family movie. It's a cartoon. The people were so. There was, I heard a parent here. They're saying I'm gonna go take my kid to go see this. But I mean, it's a cartoon. Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Now. But everybody's saying the same thing. It's just a bunch of actors. They hired a bunch of actors. They did not hire any writers. They did not hire anybody to really make a good movie. They just got a bunch of people in the studio said in there who were super famous. They paid them a couple of uh, you know some millions of dollars, some money. Come read these lines real quick and let us get put you on the credit. We've got this guy. We've got that girl. We've got this guy. We've got this guy. We got this guy. We got this. Guy. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, ah, I still don't want to see it. Forty-three million dollars. What was the budget? That one I was curious to watch, but I didn't have time. I ain't going to look it up. Box Office Mojo said it only made $43 million. I, I have kids. I'm not, if it's not Disney, nine times out of ten, I'm not going to go to the theaters to watch it. Unless it's Shrek, maybe. Maybe the dragon one. Maybe the dragon one. How to Train Your Dragon. DreamWorks and Illumination. They, 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 Sony can come sometimes. They can get it. Especially with that Spider-Man, though. Uh, the next one, 
after this at four, oh, 30 see, now we're down to the third we're, we're past the 40s now we're at 36 million dollars domestic and that is mile 22 mark and mark man now, with the him and this director they made a lot of hits together hit after hit after hit but this is the brick wall this is their first brick wall to, and it hits so hard that i think i don't even know if these guys are even gonna work together anymore because now it's like oh my god don't let that scare you though I mean, you come out with three great movies together, one bad one. The track record still, your kill death ratio is still on point. But this movie was advertised so badly, I did not want to see. I was like, oh, I don't like them reviews, man. I don't know. I don't like that. You're like, I don't know. I don't like that. I kept saying to my, you like that? Did you like that movie? I don't know. Did you see that commercial? I don't like that. I, no, I did not like it, and I did not. Uh, no, so I still, to this to, to this day, I still don't. But it might be a movie that I might circle around, come back, make a U turn to come see it. Now, here's another here's another good one. I even got into an argument with somebody on Facebook about this movie, Robin Hood. Some idiot on Facebook uh, who was like, not 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 on no no not on the uh, talkings with the media. So if anything, you guys want to say on on, on that. What not you can say it's fine. We'll laugh about it. We can talk your right to your own opinion. You know, if you don't, if you like my opinion, if you don't, if you hate my guts, you don't like me for whatever reason, that's fine. I'll let you say whatever you have to say. But this was my personal Facebook account. Somebody was posting and you post something like the advertisements of this movie is is making it seem like um, uh, Robin Hood uh, is being trained by an African-American to be a criminal. We should be offended by this as African-Americans. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? You talking about Jamie Foxx? You talking about Morgan Freeman? Little John? They're playing a character that was never black. You want to talk? You want to? You want a, um, a march? You get a get a bunch of white guys out there mad that their roles are being taken away by Morgan Freeman and Jamie Foxx? Won't do that? Why? Why? But maybe because they had the better read. Maybe Morgan Freeman and Jamie Foxx auditioned and all the other white guys that tried to play Little John, they had a good uh, audition too, but they maybe they crushed it. Maybe it just looked like they crushed it more. So it's not, a, it's not this movie wasn't written for Robin Hood to become a better criminal. And he's like, oh, I know how I can become a better criminal. Let's find the nearest black dude I can find. And just, hey, hey, black guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Robin Hood, how can I help you? Well, you guys seem to know a lot about willing and dealing and killing and spilling, so why don't you just come over here and show me how to shoot a bow and arrow and I can rob from the rich and give it to the poor. Rob from the rich and give it to the poor, you say? Well, sir, I usually rob from everybody and just keep it, but you the white man, so I guess I just have to show you how you want it to be done, sir. I got never seen an elephant fly. I seen a dragon fly. It wasn't even like that. At all. And this woman was making it seem like this was some diabolical conspiracy to make black people look like petty thugs and criminals. Little John, I mean, I don't even know if this guy was even real. I think this is a fairy tale. And if it was, it was based on a white guy. And let's be honest, Robin Hood was thieving and stealing and killing before he even met Little John. That dude had his mind made up. I'm going to rob your ass and I'm going to give it to her ass. He had his mind made up. And he went to another white guy named Little John, not Lil John. Yeah, no. And they worked together. This was not a conspiracy to make it seem like white people become better criminals by asking black people to show them the way. That was it was the most ridiculous argument I got. And if you like, you don't like my opinion, or nobody asked you to, to to say anything, you post this comment on social media. I hate people. I hate talking with people like this. People who only they give you a yes or no question. And in their mind, there's only one answer. And then they get surprised. With, oh, you said no. Idiots. Complete. And I get I get sick and I can't deal with people like that. I used to be involved with a person. No, I'm not. No, I can't work with you. I can't be in a relationship with you. I can't even be around you. And I can't hear you breathing. I don't like the way you chew your food. I don't like the way you slurp your soup. This ain't going to work. And I'm and I leave. So, but even though I supported the movie on that one, 
I did not support the movie this way because like I said, I did not, it did not interest me. So I did not go, I did not watch it. So as much love as I gave to Jamie Foxx and gave him a pass because I knew, I knew Pacey from Dawson's Creek was a level seven and he proved it. And that was funny to me. I could tell even when she married Tom, I knew it. I knew she was, I, I knew she was a level seven. So, you know, I still didn't go see the damn movie. As much as I promoted it and championed it on that one alone, because that one idiot, what she said about black people training black people to be, to be better criminals on on camera makes us look bad. No, there's a lot of other black. Look up black exploitation. Even the Dumbo thing that I said with the dragon fly and the elephant fly, even that Dumbo thing was a better example than what point she was trying to make. She had a valid point, but the wrong movie. This was not the thing. That, if anything, this was the, this was a uh, more of a how black people were taking white, white people's uh, jobs. This role was written for. Well, how are you making Superman black now? It almost happened. Will Smith almost was Superman. Okay, it just happened. Don't get mad at the actor. He's the dude is an actor. He's got to act. He's got to make money. He's doing his job. This is make believe. You are gonna get mad at Will Smith for taking the role for Superman because Warner Brothers offered it to him? Psst. I don't care. I know what this movie's gonna get. Look what's happening. He got, he's the genie right now. Look what's happening to him now. You think he's still gonna say no? He probably knew that. This is Robin Williams. You following up? Everybody's gonna hate on it. Even if The Rock was all the genie, they still would hate it. I knew Robin Williams. I missed it. That's not gonna happen though. It's just not. This is a new rendition. It ain't about race and all that stuff. It's a, he's an actor. He's doing his job. Now, if the movie was written like that, we, only black people can teach white people to be criminal. Then, hey, I'll, I'll be right there with you to march. But this wasn't the movie. This wasn't that at all. So I'm, and I spent too much time on it already. Damn it. She made me mad. Next movie. Uh, Winchester. Was this a horror? What was this? What was this supposed to be? I didn't see it. It looks stupid. I won't say that. But it only made $25 million. So something was wrong with it. Now, to be fair, a lot of these movies on this list had a limited, more limited budget or limited um, screenings than others. I mean, you can't compare that to. I mean, if you break down the equivalent of Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom to Winchester, there was fewer screenings. Yeah, but if you break it down, still the opportunity to make money was still there, and the interest was there. And when the, when the movie is that good, even if it starts uh, with you know, a limited amount of screenings, the, the screens increase. And none of, I don't think any of these movies on this list had that going for them. The screenings steadily decreased for all of them. So let's just call it what it is, right? Fair enough. Moving on. After this, at uh, a whopping 25, no, 24 million plus on, on the box office domestic, The Strangers, Pray at Night. I saw the first one. I mean, I meant to see the second one. My stepdaughter saw it. But uh, like I, I might, I might circle around and watch it. Might circle around, but no, 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 no. But even with even that's uh, that had a lot going against it. The first one did so well, and it was so long between the film. So maybe you know, give eh, you know, you never know. Who knows? Who knows? But it made more money than uh, Sorry to Bother You. Something that people were really looking forward to, especially after his performance on Get Out. It, I don't know why people thought that this movie was going to be another get out for, for some. I don't know why. The premise of it looked funny. It looked interesting. It was a composite. This is something. There is something to be said about uh, people when they hear, especially when they hear a voice of, "Oh, look at the remember the movie Crash." That whole the opera, the the woman uh, on the phone that was trying to help the cop uh, or her dad, a like, healthcare thing, and he could hear it in her voice that she could tell. You, you can tell some people are black. You can tell some people are white by the way they talk or something in the the the. Our bone structure, I guess, in our in our uh, our voice boxes, and it was like whatever her name was, uh, uh, Sharita or Shashinka, whatever her name was, and the guy and the cop was like, yeah, yeah, oh, I could, oh, I should have known based on how you sounded. That was probably your name. And she was like, oh, mother, and had to hang up on. But there's something to be said about it. I mean, sometimes when people know or think that they're talking to, I worked, I used to work at Telecheck. And, and and every person uh, out there, they were like, oh, yes, sir. How are you doing? Yes, I can. I can help you. Oh, you want to cancel your t- subscriptions to um, a bit big butts leaking porno dot com. All right. And it was like that. It was something called I bill that was a, a subsidiary to Telecheck. And we would have to cancel 
um, subscriptions to pornographic stuff. And people, people get mad because their car was getting billed over and over. And they didn't realize they forgot to cancel and they would call in. And, and we, we, not, we weren't allowed to curse, but we were allowed to say the name of the product. Oh, yes, sir. You want to. I see the reason why your car has been billed uh, uh, $49.99 for the past six months, sir, is because you forgot to cancel your subscription uh, to allbigtitties.com. And uh, it's been billing you since uh, 2004. Do you want to cancel that now? I'm going to be like, oh, my God. Now, imagine. Now, the second that dude got off the phone, he'd be like, oh, man, this motherfucker, you know. I got to cancel this card, man. It was so stupid. Was like, the second that phone ring again, oh yes, sir. Um, yes, yeah. Let me cancel that for you. What you, what you got? Big old diggers in your mouth about dot com. Yeah, you forgot to cancel that. We just been being billed for like the past three months. All right, I just canceled that for you. Oh, oh, you want a credit? I'm sorry, there's no refunds. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the big digging your mouth dot com. Thank you. And they would cancel it. But when they got off the phone, it sounded completely different. Now, if they talked the way they normally talk on that phone, oh, people would get irate. And there are people who broke character. It was always funny. So I, I was interested in seeing that movie because I knew it rang true. Just didn't interest me enough to see it in 2018. So I moved on. I might come around and come see it. But you got to catch me on a good day. Now, moving on to the next uh, movie. Now, the next one was a surprise to me, but not really. There's The Girl in the Spider's Web. I like the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series. I didn't read the books, but I watched all three films, the original version. Then they started making the American version. <laughs> and I like the actresses that they chose for both. And I like the execution of the American version for the first one. But when they couldn't get Daniel Craig and everybody to come back to do the sequel, and all this time went over and over and over again, and then I saw that this was in the, the same vein, I'm thinking, okay, oh, so they... They, they, they're just going to push on with the with part two with the new actress. Okay. The actress that they, that they chose from The Crown. Great actress. Like it. I love it. Let's keep it. Okay. That's fine. Then I looked at the title again. I'm like, wait a minute. That wasn't the title of the second one. What is this? They skipped two movies. Two books. This is the fourth in the story. It's in the story. But, I mean, but if you come from watching the first American version to this... There was a lot of shit in between that happened. Stupid. And then the way they marketed it. You had a brilliant actress. Who was actually another movie that she did. Did actually pretty good. But she's coming off the crown. Beautiful girl. Great actress. No advertisement. Barely any. You hardly could recognize her in the movie. In the commercials. And then you wonder why it only made 14 million dollars. Sorry to bother you, only made 17. I don't know if I've mentioned that or not. Then let's bring us to the, let's bring us to the, let's, we're down to the final three. The next movie, Mortal Engines. I had no interest in seeing this at all. Everybody was talking about this based on this book series. This is going to be big. London, they own planes, they own boats, and they're on, they're on the ground. The whole city is being moved and stuff. That already sounded stupid to me in the first place. Now, if you read the book, it probably would have came off awesome. But when the way I saw it, the, I, was like, oh, oh, man, I don't know. I don't like that. I don't think that's going to be any good. 14 million. This was a big budget. Now, that one, I was curious to look at the the um, how much it would cost to, to produce. And it was not available. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it was over 20, 250 million. And you only made 14 million in America. I'm not, sorry, in the Americas and, you know, domestically, including Canada. What happened? The plot, the direction, something was wrong. Something was wrong. I have no interest in circling around and watching this one at all. You would really have to accidentally catch me on a good day when I'm not busy or I might not be able to be or I don't feel like playing PUBG. I'm not going to watch that at all. And I'm definitely not going to watch the next movie because it only made $5 million. I haven't watched one of his movies in a long time. Johnny Knoxville, Action Point. I heard that the premise of it was it was based on a true story or it is a true story. But Johnny Knoxville is just not, he doesn't, he's not a draw. Even though he was still doing, he was doing some of his jackass stuff. It was all in the same vein. I haven't like, I have never watched a jackass film. It's just like, I can watch it on TV. I, I'm not going to go to a theater and watch that. That's ridiculous. It's no, I mean, that's, the, that's the stuff that you put on TV. 
I'm not gonna go to a theater to watch that. That's not a that's not a movie experience. That's some stuff you can watch on your phone. And, and the only it's, it's, and the only reason why I'm gonna move on from that one quickly. That this last one on the list that I have this as the last one, not because it made the least amount of money. It technically made what nine nine dollars and ninety nine cents because it's a Netflix film, Cloverfield Paradox. Netflix is rating the system and what they determine is a success. It depends on a lot of things. How many people watched it when it first debuted? How many people are talking about it? Positive review. There's a reason why, and it's because of Amy Schumer's um, the leather special that they got rid of their rating system with five stars. That thing was getting negative stars. How do you kill a star on a rating system? How did uh, we gave you up to you between one to five stars, and she was getting negative stars? How was that possible? It was so bad they got rid of their rating system. Either give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So I guess this one was getting so many thumbs down. But a lot of things that people were saying was it, it wasn't scary. It was the connection to the Cloverfield um, um, mythology was not good. You know, all that stuff. So I was like, you know what? And I'm a subscriber to Netflix, but I'm not watching that. I'm not going to waste my time. It didn't look interesting. It doesn't sound interesting. People are saying that it's not interesting. Whose opinion I respect. And the only reason why I have it below Action Point is because there's no money involved. There's, it's based on how many new subscribers. If a show gets so much buzz, it's actually causing people to go, I'm going to subscribe to Netflix. If, if Netflix feels there's a bump up in their subscriptions, the show is going to get renewed. Because they'll time it around that when that release came out and what people are talking about. And people are going, oh my God, I'm not going to share passwords anymore. I'm actually going to get my own. This is good. It's the brilliant thing about Netflix nowadays. I got to go talk about that. The whole thing between Blockbuster and Netflix. I really got to dive into that. But within this whole listing, there is something else that I wanted to talk about. There's, a, there's five movies on this list. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. That was the most interesting. Now, as much as, as, much as you might think that the Predator sucked, Nutcracker sucked, or I, even I Feel Pretty. All three, all three of those movies made more money than um, Action Point, Mortal Engines, Sorry to Bother You, Stranger Things, Robin Hood, Mile 22, Sherlock Gnomes. Sherlock Gnomes made more money than uh, Strangers, uh, Prey at Night, Sorry to Bother You, The Girl with uh, and the Spider's Web, and Mortal Engines. I feel pff, A Wrinkle in Time made more money than all these movies, except Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. The top five of this list that, that were the biggest shocks, I guess, would be, let's talk about this. The top, the top five movies of 2018 that I did not watch that are probably the biggest surprise uh, flops. That would be at $416 million plus domestic Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Wrinkle in Time at only $100 million box, uh, box office for uh, domestic uh, charts, The Predator. Red Sparrow, Predator at 51 million, Red Sparrow at 46, and Mortal Engines. The most surprising because it's the biggest drop off based on the budget. Mortal Engines only at 14 million plus. Now, those are the, the five movies that I have as the biggest surprise failures that I have not watched. Only one. Two, three out of the five, I will not watch. I probably will never see. Two out of five ain't bad. I will see Jurassic World and I will check out Red Sparrow. But these are the movies that uh, I, it, it, you're going to have a lot of soul searching to do when it's all said and done. If after taking a hit like that, ooh, you got to look back and go, what was it about it? Was it the marketing? Yes. The direction, yes. The writing, yes. The execution, yes. It was all of these things. All of these things contributed to it because we vote with our dollars. And if that's the amount of money that you're breaking in and you were you were thinking, well, save for Jurassic World, still technically a financial success. But if you were projecting to break the bank, you know, we're going over to a trillion, we're going to make a trillion, then no. But really, it was just a critically uh, panned movie in comparison to the last Jurassic World. 
But the rest, oh no, flop. Flippity flop. You, I can make a rap song about that and call it flip, flop. That's all it is. It's a flop. They were flops. They flopped. They, you, can, you can hear them on the, with their sandals walking on the concrete. Just that's flapping that, that little, that, that annoying little smack with the feet. It's flopping. That's what they did. Those are the biggest, biggest surprises to me. But two of them out of the five, I'm going to go check out. So tell me what you think. What did you think about my list overall? Did you, do you agree with uh, my list? Uh, my, was I right to skip all these movies? But let me know the ones on the list that you think I should go give a chance to. Well, no, go back and watch this one. Uh, the ones on the list that I said that I should watch. If you think I'm when the ones I said I'm going to make a U-turn and watch eventually, you go, no, 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 Chris, don't waste your time. Tell me which ones. Tell me. Put in the box. Put in the comments. Tell me which ones of these movies I should give a chance, and the ones that you that one on this list that you skipped that you will not circle back to go see. I haven't even seen Aquaman yet. I'm about to go watch it now, though, today. Taking Joy out to go watch it tonight. So a lot of movies. I still haven't seen Creed. I got to watch that. There's a lot of movies I got to catch up on, dude. But I'm also finishing up on uh, Marcella uh, Season 2. So I got to do a review on that. It's coming soon. So until next time, let me know what you guys think. Hit, you know, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already become a subscriber. Uh, remember to keep yourself prepared at all time, guys. And until next time.